Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Gulfstream today. Ron Nicoletti, along with Acacia Courtney, another Chamber of Commerce Day here in South Florida. Get some nice breeze coming out of the south, it looks like, this afternoon. The main track is fast. Turf course is firm. Lots of blue skies out there, Acacia. So uh, a beautiful day for racing. Absolutely. As we do have 10 races on the card coming up this afternoon. Looking forward to it for sure on this uh, Thursday. And uh, it's we're lucky with the weather, that's for sure, as it's just uh, our final couple of weeks of the championship meet. Yeah, this is the final week, uh, ex no, fi next to final weekend coming up uh, starting Friday. And that means uh, Beat the Expert is back on Friday. And I know you had to do it for a couple of weeks. Uh, I was on assignment, we'll say. <laughs> now it's my turn to do Beat the Expert. So that's the way I figured you'll be the final Beat the Expert of the championship meet. I, I will be right before <laughs> I uh, ship up north, but uh, I'll... I'll focus on next week when we get there. <laughs> this time, the all eyes are on you, Ronnie, tomorrow afternoon. Free to play. As always, you can sign up on the Gulfstream Park website. Yeah, always a lot of fun, so uh, we'll see how that plays out. And uh, always have, uh, always love the people that play along and uh, you know, give us some uh, grief when they beat <laughs> us. So we, I, like, I like that. So <laughs> let's go to the uh, fr Thursday card, the five furlongs on the turf. We're going to kick it off with Maiden Claim is four and up 16,000. we got a scratch at a four, and it kicks off our first of two Pick fives this afternoon. I have a $36 ticket to start things off. Currently 7 to 5 on the number 7. Charlie can do early in the way during the drop in class is key, though this gelding is 0 for 14. One of three that I did use. Too deep in the second race. Um, I think that King Cairo on the drop in class should be tough, but also included the four Carobio. Uh, too deep in the third race and fourth as well. Um, in race number four, Corey is 6 to 5 on the morning line. Uh, off uh, the drop in class for Brad Cox. But I like the six sexy dream also dropping in class for Ralph Nix. And then three deep in the fifth race, which is also the one that does kick off today's Rainbow Six. Yeah, a mile in the six. That'll be a mile on the turf, excuse me. Yeah, this first race uh, with current, as you mentioned, that seven and five favorite, Charlie Cantu on the drop. I, I went to the inside and with the discreet tune who's dropping a notch and breaking from the rail after setting a pressured pace. Got nailed late when finishing third. Let's go back and show you that performance. We're going to pick it up from the top of the stretch to the wire. And I just thought that this horse did all the dirty work in this race. You're going to see it turn it for home, was setting that pressured pace and, and, and comes home. And now it's in a, you know, a battle on both sides. And there it's in the number 10 there, you know, with a tough post and would not give in. This is really a hard performance, but gets that done in by the two outside closers in here. So I, I just thought it was a decent performance to see how this horse would run uh, this afternoon, discreet to number eight in that race. So, it looks like he did the dirty work and got caught at the end. So coming back, got the inside post this afternoon. You got strong rider Paco Lopez in the saddle. Yeah, and this one is, I think, a big part of the pace. And you're absolutely right. Was drilling with Grand Union, who I think we'll see back on Friday, if not, I'm not mistaken. Another horse that just runs the same race every single time. And is always right there. You have <laughs> to give him that credit. Um, my my biggest question with discreet tune is that he's already been exposed at this level and lower was beaten for 12-5 at Gulfstream Park West back in November so I wanted in this race horses that were kind of a fresh face not ones that had run well but maybe would be a short price after being consistently beaten so the current favorite Charlie can do in the drop in class makes sense um, and fits that bill also thought the same with the five Marsac who's only had one race on the turf it was against made in 40 company um, at Churchill back in September and actually ran an okay race. This is another one that has some natural speed. Um, it's a big drop in class, just considering the turf form for Ian Wilkes um, and has uh, this one had a little bit of a look to me of maybe being able to fly underneath the radar and I'm just going off of being a fresh face and a, perhaps a little bit of class. Well, currently four to one on the board and uh, ridden today by Julian Leperu. So let's go to race number two, seven furlongs, maiden claiming three-year-olds, 50,000 down to $40,000, kicks off a first of two pick fours this afternoon. You started it off. I, I think the logical one in here is the number three, King Cairo. And dropping in class, did debut for Maiden 50, sprinting as well, ran a good third. And then the last two races were going two turns on the dirt and against Maiden Special Weight. So it just looks like it's kind of back to basics today. Have a stat to show as well um, for Jorge Delgado. Um, I didn't want to do the drop in class because he's already been exposed at this level, but just going route to sprint with dirt runners um, over the last five years 
years. He has very good numbers with this kind of move, and that's kind of what I'm keying off of as well because I think this guy is a better sprinter. 28% win, 48% of the time in the money, still a positive ROI of 222. Could be a big day for Paco Lopez, who had a couple of wins yesterday as well. Um, I thought his debut for 50 was actually a tougher field for the level than what he faces today. I got one of my favorite angles in here with the number one Jerry's turn is dropping to the 50 level today and turning back to seven furlongs on the main track after showing speed. Tiring, that was against maiden special weight runners going a mile on the turf. So I like uh, horses that show speed going along on the grass mm -hmm. and turning back to seven eights for Timmy Hills, Joe Bravo. So eight to one in the morning line, trying to get a little price. And the both of us used the number four Carubio on our ticket. And this one is going back to the dirt as well. Was claimed a couple starts back for Mike DiPaolo. Tried a distance of ground on the turf last time, and that was a no-go. So again, back to basics. Um, this is actually the half-brother to Secret Circle, um, but just seems that it's being logical and kind of back where he started with this horse, where he was sprinting on the dirt two starts back. And I realized that um, he was second. He was second by uh, 14 lengths, as Kim <laughs> Saros was very impressive that day. But I just think this is the right spot. Yeah, and so and written today by Tyler Gaffleone, who had a really nice day yesterday too. So uh, third race, five and a half furlongs, claimants four and up, non-winners of two in life, twenty-five down to twenty. Uh, got a, hit by the scratch bug in here. We're losing two with the three and the six, so we're we'll dealing with a five-horse field. And you went to the inside with the one lavery. Yeah, and I had uh, done these picks already, got lucky uh, with the uh, Guadalupe Preciado pick yesterday. They got the job done in lease, and hopefully we can see the same thing happen today. Um, had run a couple of good sprint races with previous connections at Indiana Grand towards the start of his career. So turning back in distance and back to the main track today, um, not to mention a, grop, a drop in class. I realize that the last two races haven't been anything special, but I'm hoping that the, um, the turn back will help him to be a little bit stronger today. I went with the number five, Sir Khan, who's dropping into this now when it's a two-lifetime sprint after facing tougher before going to the sidelines in December for owner-trainer Dan Peter. And he's got the four-year-old training forwardly at GP West. We're not going to be saying that much longer. I think GP West will be closing up shop in uh, another week or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it's been a long part of racing here, but uh, always a good to run there, work there and run here. Oh, absolutely. And uh, that deeper track that you see, my biggest thing is that the barn is over for 37 at the meet. So that's to me a, a kind of glaring thing. This horse is just one for 15, but maybe the drop will help. I thought the four cozy my boy could be in a good spot as well for Antonio Sano as I know that he's not exactly the winning type, but he has hit the board several times at this level. Yeah, and he looks like a logical one. It's, uh, you know, second sprinting on the dirt, a couple of starts back. Rough entry for me in third, who's uh, trying two lifetime forwards, set the pace and finish second against 12-5 state bread optional claimers. Four car Carlos Montalvo, Chucky Mon Carlos Montalvo, excuse me, will be playing. I think that's the speed of mm -hmm. the speed. I don't know if they'll catch him or not. And a uh, uh, wide open affair in race number three. There's, uh, you know, three, four different ways you can go with the five horses in yeah, the field. Yeah, exactly so, right. Fourth race, uh, six and a half for all on claimers, Phillies, three-year-olds, 20 down to 16,000, six in the field, and uh, I just uh, went with the number of four in here. You have in second, Corey's dropping to the 20 level. First outing since rallying to defeat those state bread allowance runners going six here during January for Brad Cox. He's good at doing everything, but he's about 30% winning consecutive races. Uh, you're going to have a Hall of Famer Javier Castellano in the saddle today. Here's the thing. Why <laughs> is this horse who won for state bred first level allowance company dropping in for 20 today. I, I just, I don't get it. To me, that's a big red flag. We haven't seen him since the, seen her since the start of January. The drop is a bit of a question to me. Um, was flattered, Foolish Heart, uh, who's had a couple of starts after that start um, that she beat last time. Foolish Heart did come back and win impressively yesterday. So, to me, she just seems like she almost sticks out like a sore thumb in this race. And so I said, okay, this is, I, I think, a good opportunity to try and beat her. Could she win? Absolutely. Maybe it's just going to be that she's a better horse than what she faces today. And that's why I, I included her on my pick five ticket. I just don't trust her. Um, whereas the six sexy dream, the drop in class makes sense. She was beaten a well in a tougher competition in the last couple. Um, she turns back to sprinting. She's got a big pedigree. She's the, the sister to Jackson Ben. 
Island and Grand Shores. And fortunately, after those two, we've seen several in the family recently who just haven't been at the same level. But I just think it's a logical drop in class, whereas to me, the other one seems like a little bit of a question. Well, the head scratcher in race number four is definitely the number two Never My Love who's making a local return for Jane Sabelli after shipping up to Tampa. And, and just using her speed, I wanted to go back, I, I, you know, pick it up just at the eight pole, how impressively this horse uh, ran last time up there. I don't know if it was Tampa Bay or the, the <laughs> light, light bulb, as we say, went on. But just uh, it's going to be tested for class, I'm mm -hmm. sure, with, with Paco Lopez. But this is just, a, you know, a cruise in the park for this horse. <laughs> it's amazing when you see horses that have turned completely their form around and do that. Just what cruises under the wire. Just wanted to show that race. Uh, in, I don't know what to do with that horse. 10 to yeah. 1 in the morning line. Seems like a logical price for that horse. No, you're absolutely right. Um, the two races here down in South Florida, <laughs> one at Gulfstream West and one at Gulfstream, were not even close to what we <laughs> saw up there. And maybe it was just the right move to get her to break her maiden that way. We'll see what happens. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have our Thursday, or I'll have my Thursday Rainbow Six ticket. Welcome back to Gulfstream today. We're on an Acacia. Race number five is going to be on the turf this afternoon. It's maiden claiming Phillies and Mares four and up. They run for twenty-five down to twenty thousand dollars. Going to scratch the three anonymous source and. Uh, Here's my Rainbow Six ticket, $43.20 today. And uh, right, I, Rosie's Invasion, Ginger on my mind, and Corded, kick it off for me. Twice too many, even money on the morning line. Might be a lot of people singles in race number six. Race seven, pretty nice race. I like Sanity over Sesame Street. I love the name <laughs> of that horse. Yeah. And, and race number eight, a pretty wide open affair, but I'm leaning towards Braccio di Ferro. And in the ninth <laughs> race, my best bet is the six zap daddy trying to beat Croy there. And then the last race got a little bit of a long shot with the number one horse in there who I think might run a case free running. Uh, Safi Joseph, Javier Castano, I think six or eight to one on the morning line. Uh, this race uh, starting it off is not an easy one to handicap. No, it definitely is not. It's a tricky made in 25 in this spot. I do think uh, to the outside, the eight ginger on my mind may be the most logical player. Um, but she's already been kind of knocking at the door for the $20,000 level. Hasn't quite been able to get it done but I think being drawn outside and Misael Jaramillo going to be in the saddle this could be a good spot for her to potentially get that maiden score. Well, number six, Rosie's Invasion is stretching out slightly to the mile after setting the pace and getting caught late with finishing third behind a pair of next out winners. One called Copper, who came back and didn't run very well yesterday, just so you know. And I think Big Tree Cheeks ended up winning on the main track. So it was a good $20,000 maiden test until that race yesterday. Dom Chitino is the trainer. Paco Lopez named to ride. And as Acacia said earlier, it looks like Paco could have a bang-up day <laughs> if you or I are right. Yeah, yeah that, that's the key. You know, sorry, Paco, for the extra weight you got to carry with Ron and I in here. Um, I think I've tried Rosie's Invasion like, you know, seven out of her nine starts. And so, again, it's Acacia off today, so maybe that's the angle. Um, first time starter, Suspicious Mind, does debut for 25, but she's got a good turf pedigree. She's by Lemon Drop Kid. Um, the sibling was a two-time turf winner. And this uh, just looks like, as far as uh, gauging the works up at Pace and Park, just looks like it's a logical spot to debut. 
Well, number two courted moves to the inside post, post two after breaking from an outside post last time. Post 11 set the pace, yielded late to finish fourth for Jorge Abreu. Corey Lannery named to ride. Corey having a really nice winter mm -hmm. meeting here. And this horse just figures logical with the improved post, I thought, today. No, absolutely. And uh, finished right behind Ginger on my mind last time out as they rematch. There's another firster in this field. Um, this one by Commissioner, and that's in seven, Viani. And a couple of siblings that did win on the grass. Firster for Mark Cassie typically like to see one from this barn, uh, particularly in Maiden Claiming Company, but thought if uh, maybe one of the two live firsters can upset one of these horses that has had many chances in the spot. Yeah, that, excuse me, that might be the way to go in there because, like you said, a lot of them have had some chances. Race number six, six and a half furlongs, Maiden Special Weight, State Bread, three-year-olds, kicks off our final pick five. Interesting to see what you did with Twice Too Many. Yeah, well, Twice Too Many is one that I did use, but I backed myself up with another firster that I just kept going back to the three uphold the law. First for Mike Stidham, who we haven't seen run many horses throughout the championship meet um, here, but I who I have a world of respect for. So I'm too deep. It's a compact field, but I think it's a very interesting one to kick off the pick five. Three deep in races seven and race eight. I have a bit of a long shot in the eighth race with dropped anchor, who's been in good form right now, eight to one on the morning line. Um, in race nine, I've got the same two that you do in Zap Daddy and Croy, those hard knocking campaigners. And then um, I like Kay's running free in the last as well. Not the top pick, but um, the one I did have in second, I'll use with Sylvanella on the drop down. Well, I'm glad you used that horse in there. Yeah. Now, twice too many, as I said, even money on the morning line. I don't know if that's a little low. He's just stretching out mm -hmm. to six and a half again after following a second place finish behind undefeated uh, repeat winner who we're going to see running some really nice races. That's Soup and Sandwich. I know you love that name <laughs> at this distance. And a second place finish behind Joshy Jack, which we'll show you last time out. Uh, this one is, we're going to pick it up at the top of the stretch to the wire uh, twice too many duels through the stretch but just can't hold off that repeat winner Joshy Jack in this race you're going to see it I thought it was a, a, a very game performance and Acacia Joshy Jack when you're handicapping Saturday's card at least in my estimation every maiden race Joshy Jack seems to have been in it just <laughs> yeah. seems it's amazing so yeah. uh, he's going to run and he's just given it all here and I think he runs exceptionally well in, in this race uh, to, you know to get it done so off Joshy Jack running second to that horse, twice too many. Brian Lynch, Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. Yeah, the reason I didn't single twice too many is because I still question the quality of those Joshy Jack races. Mm -hmm. um, soup and Sandwich, absolutely. I know that Soup and Sandwich came back and he won a three-horse field, beat a three-horse field at Tampa the next time, but he did it easily and he's pointing to the Florida Derby. Now, Joshy Jack debuted for 25, had been kind of knocking at the door. His next win after breaking his maiden was also a three-horse field. Um, just not really running against anybody. So I, I question it a little bit. That said, I still think that twice too many is probably the one to beat. I think he should have won last time, but I do think in this compact field, he's the one to beat with the pedigree, have to pattern recognition, a couple of nice Florida bread stakes winners in Florida Fuego and Lovesick. However, the three uphold the law also has a nice pedigree. Colt by Upstart, who seems to have maybe quieted down a little bit, but had some very precocious two-year-olds throughout the summer. This is a half-brother to grade one winner speech. Training up at Tampa, Mike Stidham opts to run him here at Gulfstream. I thought this something worth noting. Well, talking about the, uh, the, the uphold the law, I put it on my ticket for all the reasons you mentioned, Edgar Zayas in the Salote. Number two, Nureyev's Dream, and is a half-brother to a local superstar, Ballet Diva, I guess that's the name, Nureyev's Dream. You see that? Uh, I know you're a <laughs> former ballet dancer. Right. You still might be, for all well, I know. Well, Dame Sylvie Guillem, <laughs> Sylvie Guillem is a very famous ballerina, so that makes right. sense uh, as far <laughs> as the pedigree does go. Well, debuts with trainer Ralph Nix with a solid morning work tab showing over the local trainer. And this is the son of Jess's dream. Dream gets Lasix. I like Jess's dreams. Mm -hmm. They've been running very well. So this one bred up and down to be a pretty nice uh, of course in here. We'll see how this one runs. Absolutely. I think uh, definitely an interesting one to look at. I, I find this a fascinating race. Uh, even though we do have that heavy favorite, there's also a firster by Uncaptured who's been very versatile, especially with those runners here in Florida. And that's a five. One name says it all. <laughs> uh, this is a half brother to a multiple stakes winner, Bella Shambrock. Bella Shemblock. Mm -hmm. Race number seven this afternoon on the turf, five furlongs, allowance, Phillies and Mares, four and starter allowance, excuse me, four and up. They started for 16 or less. We did scratch the main track only in here, number eight. So uh, we'll be dealing with a field of seven. And uh, we have our exacta flip flop. We'll start it with you. And I love the name, the way they <laughs> did too. this with Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah, I'm 
I'm guessing this is the only way they could get it past the <laughs> jockey club. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Um, this was just kind of a class play for me. We'll see again how that form does transfer from Tampa Bay Downs down to Gulfstream here. But uh, third behind Miss Aramet last time out in Stakes Company in the Lightning City at Tampa. And we know how good Miss Aramet is. Um, had two nice allowance victories sprinting at Tampa before that. This is a tough mare. Yeah, that's a tough mare. So we'll see how this horse, this horse runs. I got on the ticket too, but I did go with Two Sanity, who's going to the Mike Maker barn after the claim, turns back to five, followed back to back second place, finishes going five, comes up, sets the pace, and faders against those optional. That's going around two turns at seven and a half. So Tyler Gaffleon guides. This is a seven year old order of City Zip. Doesn't matter to Mike. He jumps in and grabs him. No, absolutely. <laughs> and and um, this one, as you said, the second place finishes. That was behind Paint and Blues Away, who was in red hot form for Jane Sabelli, a very tough horse that she was running against. And this just seems like, yeah, the Mike Maker type <laughs> of claim, you know, tease out some of that back class that these horses do have. And the number seven, Odor Odra Mark, is stepping up to competition after responding in the first race under the uh, tutelage of Kathleen O'Connell with a late running score against 23 lifetime claims. Claim is Paco in the saddle. So it has a license to move forward mm -hmm. today. No, certainly. Second time with the barn, second off the layoff. It was a nice win last time out. Let's go to race number eight this afternoon. A mild starter optional claim, a three-year-old starter for 25 or less, so the optional claiming price of $25,000. Just curious to see. I, I, the morning line favorite was in here was number three, Hercules, a horse I did not use mm -hmm. on my ticket. I was curious to see who you did. But you could see by our selections how wide open this race is. You got your long shot in here, and that's dropped anchor. And I, I can certainly understand that Hercules had the win last time out, but I just preferred others in here. Um, I, I didn't want really all the rematching ones to the outside who had faced each other before in, in the six and eight and hard game maybe a little bit of uh, I thought actually on paper hard game is the horse to beat the number seven in here so um, long shot is the number four dropped anchor first off the claim for Alfredo Velasquez and I think because of that might fly under the radar a little bit but this is a barn that does do pretty well with new claims had a very sharp work on the main track here at Gulfstream since then um, two victories recently uh, both um, when breaking his maiden and then came back with a good second against open 12-5 company faced the non-winners of two last time and this just seems like uh, I guess it's a step up in class but overall the performances he's been running lately have been solid. Yeah, Alfredo Velasquez does a good job. Mm -hmm. He's up, I think, the Pennsylvania area came down. He's, all his horses seem to run well, especially mm -hmm. during our summer campaign. I did go with the number six, Braccio de Ferro, who's wheeling back after rallying to finish. Uh, I thought a game second at this level and distance last time out for Jose D'Angelo. Uh, Junior Alvarado handling the second start at this mile distance. And uh, you're right, a hard game for... Uh, uh, Guadalupe Preciado might be the one. His first off the claim horses. You got to take a serious look at. Absolutely. As we saw yesterday, getting a win. Um, this horse won the last two races since switching back to the dirt. Obviously in good form right now. And I think that could potentially be the one with the target on his back. Well, here's the head scratcher in race number eight today. <laughs> We're not going to show you this one. We'll just talk about it. It's the five Giacate, who's stepping up to face winners after responding to both a big drop down in competition and blinkers with an almost nine length victory. But it was against 12-5 maidens going a mile for Greg Sacco. Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. Is there another one like that in the tank? I will soon see, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we'll find <laughs> out soon enough. <laughs> Let's go to race number nine. I like this race this mm -hmm. afternoon. Mile on the turf allowance, optional claimer for state bred four-year-olds and up. The optional claiming price is $16,000. Yeah, and I, I like Zap Daddy a little bit over, over Croy today. who's going to be the logical choice. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to go back and show you this horse's last race. Uh, I'm going to pick it up at the top of the stretch to the wire. Was that that daddy you're going to see it really nice there he's the number five and he's just going to tip out and and win his second consecutive race so i, I just thought of that performance here you see him turn for home and i just like this move that he makes he just comes out and finds that little seam and closes nicely to get it you know and i just thought of that performance i'd go back with him and try and maybe beat croy here and you see zap daddy very game through the stretch and just gets up under the shadow of the wire as the guy up in tampa bay says all the time so uh we'll see how that Number five, uh, or I mean the number six today, Zap Daddy runs was the five then. But Croy, boy, stretching out, and this is a reclaim by Danny Gargan. Yeah, and, and just to circle back to Zap Daddy quickly, I, I think that the biggest thing with him is that he's in good form right now, that his last two races were wins. One that dated Claimer two starts back and then came back to get the starter last time, beat a couple of next out winners, including Calibrator, who got an 
81 buyer speed figure the next time. So I think he beat a salty field um, and has that good closing kick. Now, Croy to the outside, a reclaim for Danny Gargan, as you mentioned, beating a neck last time behind J.P. Hellish. And I thought it was actually, um, again, a solid race. He has an a lot of early speed. There was a lot more speed in that race than there is today. And that's why I went back to Croy for the main reason. Um, he's got a ton of back class. It's been a while since he's won. He's versatile. He has some questions right now. Zap Daddy has the recent victories. Croy's looking for that first one since May of 2020. Yes, he is a four-time local winner. Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. We both have two Freedom Matters. Who's changing barns going to the Kelly Breen barn after the claim. Stretching out slightly today. Rallied to finish third behind Croy. That was their recent race at the seven and a half furlongs. He's good with new claims at this meet, uh, Kelly Breen. And who else? Paco Lopez in the saddle today. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Kelly Breen's horses have been running very well up the claim throughout the meet. Well, wait, look, we just got a nice breeze down here in, in the past. Everything is shaking, so whipping up a little <laughs> bit here. Tenth race, mile on the turf. Claimers, Phillies and Mayors, four and up. Non-winners of two in life. Uh, you went with the number seven, Silvanella, on top of your ticket, I believe it is. And uh, you can understand Christophe Clement absolutely going to be the one to beat with Tyler Gaffleone. Just the drop in class. Third off the layoff, uh, dropping in class here. Obviously, the last couple of starts have uh, been just not at the right level. So it's an aggressive drop, but it does seem to make sense. And um, just being logical off of how the horse has run recently, did break her, her maiden here at Gulfstream uh, back last year, a year ago for 75,000 as the favorite with that drop. So I think the drop in class just makes sense third off the bench. Well, the one K's running free, uh, drops a notch and stretches out to the mile after showing some late interest in winning one of two recent surf outings. Now, that was at five furlongs, but the trainer Safi Joseph Jr. has Javier Castellano atop this daughter of Uncaptured, who's run well in a mile in the past, albeit it was that race that was moved to a sloppy main track. So I, I thought getting a little bit of a price, because I think s s the seven is going to take most of the money in there, at least I believe it will, with Tyler Gaffleone on the daughter of the factor. I also used the K. Lady Cleverly, who's debuting locally for Juan Arias after following her maiden victory going a mile at Tampa. Comes back, slow starting seventh against those 32 optional claimers, going a mile at 16th. Also up there at Oldsmar, Marcos Manessis, sort of a uh, you know, give it an upset consideration in this spot here. So uh, maybe it runs well. I, I just never been able to figure out the Tampa form, turt or dirt, to South Florida. I think the drop in class coming down makes sense for, for Trainer Juan Avila, who's had success at both tracks, and this one stabled up there at Tampa. And I included the five-strike magic who gets a slight drop in class. Well, that's how we see the Thursday card, but we have our lightning round ahead, and we have a lot of good things in the lightning round today. <laughs> yeah, just a quick one today is, uh, of course, gearing up for this weekend, but first of all, we drew the card yesterday for Saturday. We have three stakes coming up, including the rescheduled Grade 3 Hurricane Birdie, and it was worth the wait. We have a field of eight to look forward to as the morning line favorite is Pacific Gale, the upset winner of the Inside Information. Yeah, it took a while for that horse to get its a recent victory, but that was the grade two inside information and got to see uh, Slam Dunk uh, just uh, right a couple of moments ago out here walking around and looked pretty good for Julian Leperu. So really nice race. Uh, but that is Saturday's uh, grade three Hurricane Birdie. Yeah, we also have the Texas Glitter and the Melody of Colors. A couple of sprint stakes on tap. The Hurricane Birdie will go as race number 10 as yesterday wrapped up the first two-year-old sale of the season. Uh, the OBS March two-year-old sale concluding and a big jump up from last year to this year. Great to see that uh, in the market uh, a year after everything shut down due to COVID, Ron. And we do have um, one of the sales topper. This is an American Pharaoh filly uh, from consigned by Waver Tree that sold for 600,000. One of the co, co, the co fastest uh, workouts there. But exciting to see these two year olds on the racetrack soon. Yeah, they'll be uh, probably see some of them right here in South Florida. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and uh, two-year-old sales kicking off. That's that American Pharaoh filly. The sales topper was a practical joke filly that went for seven hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, yeah, I had seven. I went to seven twenty-five and stopped. Well, <laughs> that's good. You're showing some restraint. I'm proud of you, Rod. So we'll look forward I, I've to I've learned that. my lessons. You've taught me well. <laughs> Very good. I, I love that. Also coming up on Saturday, we're going to see another Kentucky Derby prep the Risen Star rematch, basically in the Louisiana Derby as. Six horses coming out of the Risen Star will be running in Saturday's Louisiana Derby. 
Amanda Loon, the winner there for Brad Cox. Yeah, Brad Cox has that horse, and he also has Essential Quality, who's mm -hmm. the two-year-old champion. So he looks like his barn is stocked. But uh, they're going to have to beat the Florida Derby winner. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One over, a little over <laughs> a week out uh, as we get ready for that Florida Derby. But tomorrow, it's not just beat the expert. The Stronic Five is back, and we have a monster carryover. Yeah, we're going into the day with $155,000 in the jackpot pool. And you see that we have one of the legs in here, leg B. And notice that all those races, I didn't notice mm -hmm. until I looked today, they were all on the main track. So uh, it'll be running no matter what, rain or shine. <laughs> we'll have the Stronic 5 on Friday. And usually when is this kind of uh, carryover yep. going in? It's like a half a million, if not more. Oh, yeah, that starts at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. So get ready. It kicks off at Laurel Park. And we do have our eighth race in the season. Sequence, big money in Overlay City up for grabs in this week's at Stratic 5. As that will do it for us today. We have some great racing coming up. We're happy to have you along with us as we send it up to the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Pete Aiello with Scratches and Changes.